Hello, today we are going to make spaghetti carbonara. Rather than making authentic carbonara like in my discussion post, I'll be tweaking the recipe just a bit to prevent it from hardening and sticking. Let's get to it. First, we'll need to fill up half a pot of water. Depending on the size of your pot, you may want to add or reduce your water. Then put it on a stove with the lid on and leave the water to boil at high heat. Boiling water is a physical process as it retains the same molecular structure which is H2O, or liquid water. Note that water itself is a compound and is composed of hydrogen and oxygen. Remember to keep a watch of your water. When it reaches a boil, dump your spaghetti noodles into the pot. In my case, I'll be using Royals Premium Spaghetti Noodles. Never break your noodles. Stir them until they fit in your pot. As a tip, Adding salt makes water have a higher boiling point, or boil faster. By boiling pasta, the molecular structure of the starch is changed so that the noodles turn from hard to soft. You can choose to leave them boiling until you're satisfied with the texture. To test them, pick a noodle and taste it. Mine seem good to go, so I'll turn off the heat. Take the pot and strain out the water and let your spaghetti noodles cool on the side. If you'd like, you could rinse your noodles to prevent it from sticking. Next, you want to chop three garlic cloves into small pieces. Set them aside and make room for the onions. Get one half of an onion and chop them however you'd like. Both the onions and garlic add texture and flavor to our sauce. As a side note, Chopping both onions and garlic are physical processes, as the only thing that changes is their appearance. Get another plate and set the onions and garlic aside for later. Now it's time for the bacon. Get about 6 slices, or how many you prefer, and set them down on a cutting board. Line the slices together and cut them into fine long pieces. Bacon will add a saltiness and crunch factor to our pasta. Do so until you are finished and get your pan ready. Hang the bacon over a medium heat pan. Mine are right there, and do as I do. Gently throw them over to cook. We are reminded that this is a physical change, as the fat melts, creating a unique reaction between the sugars and amino acids. In addition, its protein molecules are broken down, and its molecules are constantly altered. Keep stirring the bacon until they are golden brown. The fats act as an oil, so there is no need to add extra. Set the bacon aside and remove the oil. Next, we'll cut up some mushrooms. I'm using canned ones that contain about 20 pieces. Cut them into slices with the head towards the cutting board. Mushrooms add another level of flavor and a hint of saltiness to your dish. Put those aside for our mixture. Next, pour any oil of your choice into the pot. I chose what I had, which was olive oil. Cooking oil itself was considered a pure substance. Next, add a quarter stick or two tablespoons of butter. The oil prevents the butter from burning. Mix the two until the butter is completely melted. Together, the oil and butter create a solution. In this case, the oil acts as the solvent while the butter is the solute. Because both ingredients are no longer distinguishable, they become a homogeneous mixture. Add the onion and garlic from a while ago to the mixture. When these are cooked, or in our case sautéed, they lose proteins and break down into amino acids. There becomes a change within their properties and when something is altered on that level, it is a chemical change. Stir the ingredients until they are golden brown. Continuing our cooking session, we will dump in the cut mushrooms. Occasionally stir them around to prevent any charring. Get your all-purpose cream and dump that in as well. Note that this recipe requires 2 cartons or 2 liters of all-purpose cream. Then add in the second carton afterwards. Fetch another carton, this time of milk, and mix it well. 
At this point, the liquids are combining to make one sauce. The last cream we'll be adding is, well, straight up cream. This time it contains 7.6 ounces. Dump that all in, and now we're heading towards the solids. Add one chicken broth cube from your local store. Of course, peel it and let it melt with the mixture. I have to put it. And do the same thing with your cheese. Add an ounce of it. I prefer mozzarella, but we didn't have any at the moment, so we were left with this package of cheddar. Add half a spoon of salt. Half a spoon of Though it may vary depending on the taste of your sauce. Next up are your beautiful bacon bits. Yeah, just add those in. Your black pepper is next. Add three twists of it. Then add parsley or parsley flakes, depending on what you have. And firmly stir the sauce. Don't drop your parsley. With that wonderful aromatic carbonara sauce comes the spaghetti. When putting them in the pan, make sure not to leave out any excess noodles as you will want to eat every last bite of it. Mix the noodles in with the sauce until you feel that you've done enough labor. And so, you're left with this heterogeneous structure of both spaghetti and carbonara sauce. And that's about it. Thank you.